tonight on the program, we're going to, uh, I was going to title tonight's message, I would title it, Worse Than Sodom. The Lord Jesus made uh, such a statement, and he made it more than once, comparing countries and cities of which he was dealing with to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, all of us knows, and we're very familiar with what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's one of the greatest judgments in the Bible, where God destroyed two cities, and they were large cities, for the sins and for the crimes of homosexuality. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed in a way of which the Bible tells us that God rained fire down upon them. And the Bible said that the judgment against them was that nothing would ever grow, nothing would ever live there again. Strangely enough, the Bible also makes uh, the same statement concerning Babylon in the last days. When we think about Jesus saying that nations or cities could in fact be worse than Sodom and judged more harshly than Sodom in the days of judgment, you've got to wonder just how far those cities or those nations had gone, how far they had fallen to have surpassed, gone beyond that of which God judged Sodom and Gomorrah for. Another interesting fact is, is that if you remember the case in Genesis when God was about to destroy Sodom, Abraham pleaded for them. His uh, kin people lived in there. It was Lot, the only family that was brought out uh, by, the, by the grace of God. And God told Abraham that if he could find 10 righteous souls in Sodom and Gomorrah, that for those 10 righteous souls, God said that he would spare the city meaning for 10 righteous souls, he would spare the city in spite of all of that sin. That was an abomination, and he would destroy the whole place for 10 souls. Now, not too terribly long ago, I did the math on it. To be honest with you, I don't remember the exact numbers. But I took the percentage of what they tell us is... Uh, the approximate size and what they believe the size of Sodom and Gomorrah to have been and how many people was probably there. And I took the 10 that God said that if you, that percentage of the number they gave, which I don't remember these numbers and we can look them up later and it's on another program that's on YouTube. So, uh, but nonetheless, if you take those same numbers with the numbers that was in Sodom and Gomorrah and you take the number then, approximately 350 million people in America, and take that same percentage out, then I think it came to like 175,000. That if God applied the same standard to America today, he would say that if you can find 175,000 righteous souls, I will not bring judgment or destroy the nation. Now, I'm not saying that that's how God does it. I'm just saying that's what he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you took those same numbers and brought them to here, it would be approximately 175,000 righteous souls out of these 300 plus million people. By that, we may understand clearly why and how God is allowing America to continue. Because I do believe that in this country and across this country in scattered places, I do believe that there's still 175,000 that's blood bought. I do believe that there's still 175,000 that truly are righteous in the sense of their faith in the living God. And for that reason alone, America is being spared. Nonetheless, the Bible did tell us that there would be cities and therefore nations that would be judged more harshly than Sodom and Gomorrah and that in the day of judgment, Sodom would even rise up against them, meaning that we had sunk below Sodom and Gomorrah. Can we see that in our modern day? Can we see that here today? Can we see that being visited upon America here today? We certainly can. Let me read to you the passage of scripture that I'm talking about. It says in Matthew chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, Jesus was speaking. He said, and thou Capernaum, which was a city, which art exalted, unto heaven, which was a city of pride, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee, that is the mighty works done in Capernaum, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Meaning Sodom would have re remained. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable 
for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you or for thee. Now, I've pretty much said everything leading up to that. And now just showing you the scripture supporting it, that there will be in the last days those that are worse than Sodom. I want to read to you another passage of scripture because I'm going to break this program up into two parts. Worse than Sodom. And I'm going to show you evil communications corrupting good manners. And actually both of them fall together. Because when the evil communications, when you let wildly idiots, insanity, have free access with no price to pay, hold and control the airwaves, when everyone else that comes from a biblical or common sense perspective is banned, canceled, or removed for good, the Bible tells us that evil communication corrupts good manners. In other words, it is communication that corrupts the morality of a people. Going back now to what I've shared with you and told you numerous times, that 99.9% .9 of what we know and call spiritual warfare is fought in the fields of communication. That is where spiritual warfare is fought. That is where we go astray from God because of the communication that we receive. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Paul said, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. It just doesn't get any simpler than that. We are corrupted by communication. If it's one-on-one -on -one or this massive means of communication that we have today, which is exactly what the prophet Daniel spoke of, warning us in Daniel chapter 12 that in the last days there would be this increase of knowledge. And the Bible pointing out to us that this increase of knowledge would take place at a time of the falling away, meaning that there would be this increase of knowledge yet de decreasing in wisdom. And when you have, as I've brought out to you before, as I've brought out to you before, when you have an increase of knowledge and a decrease of wisdom, then all the technological advances are used by fools and God rejectors to spew forth evil communications, which then corrupts. We see it being done in the school system. We see it being done through the media, we see it being done through big tech. It is all a spiritual warfare that is now hyped up to its highest point ever in history. Communication and the means of it. I want to show you a couple of spots tonight, a few spots tonight, that shows you the absolute idiocy. It, it's remarkable. It's embarrassing how stupid human beings can be. And yet these be applauded and put on the air to do what? To corrupt an entire nation. And in fact, turn, again, turn it into something that is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's start with the communications. This party that we know as Democrats, the media, the Democrat Party, Hollywood, all of it, big tech, all of it is in a conspiracy together. They are one voice. They say exactly the same thing. The purpose is these are a band of demons that has joined themselves together to corrupt a nation that was built upon godly Christian principles and finally destroy it and bring the people of the United States of America into absolute dictatorial rule. That is the plan. That is to steal the soul of the American people. Now, all this bunch talks about is other people being racist. But what we have learned from them is that whatever they blame someone else for is always what they are practicing or doing themselves. We won't go back through the long history of the Democrats. It was the Democrats who fought every act of uh, uh, every bill that was written to, uh, uh, for blacks to be able to vote and so forth. It was the Democrats who created the Ku Klux Klan. All through history we see it. 
But these are the ones who cannot get, they claim that everybody else is racist. But every conversation and everything comes out of their mouth is constantly white, black, black, white, white, black. Everybody is defined by their skin color, by this bunch who calls everybody else racist. Now you're fixing to see two things here. If this party we know as Democrats, if you do not think like they think, proving dictatorial rule is their desire. If you do not think as they think and do as they do, then you're not a human being. You're not black if you don't think like them. You're not a woman if you don't think like them. They only defend women if the women think and do as they do, as they tell them to do. They only defend blacks when blacks act and do as they are told to do. That's a fact that cannot be denied. We've talked about it in the past, and we're going to talk about it a little bit again tonight. Here are these ladies on The View. They're talking about one of the females that Trump had put on uh, the Supreme Court. And what they are doing is saying that she is not a woman because she don't vote for and stand for killing babies. They call it abortion. You see, you're not a woman if you do not do what we tell you to do. Amy Barrett, watch this. You know, it's you could make past. the case that, that somebody like Amy Coney Barrett uh, was put in there because she's a white woman yeah. who they say, well, she'll go against abortion rights and she's a woman. So that was deliberate, I think. She's a white woman. She can't just be a woman. She's a white woman. Everything that comes out of these people's mouth that calls everybody else racist is always white, black, black, white, white, black. Always, it never ends. A white woman who does not defend abortion. A white woman, she says, meaning that she's not even considered or classified as a woman. And then there comes Clarence Thomas. You know, the civil rights movement and uh, the world and America and everybody should be proud. The Democrats who thinks that blacks should have a shot at everything should be happy that Clarence Thomas took Thurgood Marshall's spot, that he was a black man that got put on the Supreme Court. They should rejoice over that, but they don't. Because see, Clarence Thomas does not do what they tell him to do. And so Clarence Thomas is not a black man at all because he votes against this voters' rights bill. That is nothing but a lie and everybody knows it. It's a voter suppression bill and Clarence Thomas has got enough sense to know what these thieves, these murderers, and these racists are actually up to. But because he don't toe the mark and walk the line, they're not glad that Clarence Thomas, a black man, is a Supreme Court justice. No, and even the black lady on The View says it's a disgrace that this man was put in the place of Thurgood Marshall. Clarence Thomas, a, a black guy, a black man, a justice, he is to the right of Attila the Hun, this guy, and they put him in there thinking, oh, a black man will go against voting rights, and which I, is what he does. And it was a terrible... And it's a very tricky business they're pulling over there when you think about it. So you see the hand gestures once again, a black man, you can't be black and not do what we tell you to do, says the Democratic Party. You can't be black and think for yourself. You can't be black and it be honorable that you now sit on the Supreme Court if you don't think like we tell you to think. You can't be black, period, unless we tell you that you are black. Then the black lady talks about how disrespectful it is. Not happy that Clarence Thomas is on the Supreme Court, 
Now, it's disrespectful. Did you know, my black brothers and sisters, that during the days of slavery in the United States of America, did you know that a group of blacks that were known as free blacks, it was in the New Orleans area, they were free, free blacks. Do you know that percentage-wise, that the free blacks in the New Orleans area owned almost 27 times more slaves than the rest of the nation did? The whole United States, 1% of the American people owned a slave. 1%. You know who that 1% was, don't you? It was those mega wealthy people who had huge fields to be plowed and to be the cotton picked. 1%. That's it. Of the South, just the South, only 4% owned slaves. Four out of every hundred people. But in New Orleans, where the free blacks was, among those free blacks, they had 27% slaves. Historical fact. Just look it up. It's what I've always told you, my brothers and sisters. When it comes to wrongdoing in slavery, there ain't nobody's hands clean. Not white, black, yellow, or brown. You would think that this lady would be happy that a black man was on the Supreme Court. But no, it's insulting. Terribly disrespectful to appoint someone like Clarence Thomas with his philosophies to the seat of Thurgood Marshall, a civil rights. I know. Yes. Someone like Clarence Thomas. It's disrespectful for him to even be there, says the black lady. Well, I guess one could say that she was still on the plantation, you know, of the ones that created the Ku Klux Klan, the Democratic Party. And she's been brainwashed by that party. That is the one who did all of the lynching of the blacks. The ones that created the Ku Klux Klan. And she is now a faithful supporter. Her brain has been mesmerized by these demons. So much so now she can't rejoice that a black man is on the Supreme Court but says he's unfit to even be there, somebody like him. And as I've told you all along, from Jesse Jackson to Al Sharpton all through the years, my black brothers was intimidated. It's a simple fact because Sharpton and Jackson continually said, when you was black and when you wasn't black, it all depended on how you thought. And if you thought like them and the Democratic Party, they all joined all of a sudden, then you was a black man. But if you did not think like us now, Jackson, Sharpton, and the Democrats that created the Ku Klux Klan, you ain't black. And one of the most racist presidents we've ever had, if you go back over his past, is in the office right now. You remember whenever he said and echoed the words because he knew it would be safe to say. Because it's what Jackson always said. It's what Sharpton always said. It's what all the black leaders that's in the Democratic Party always said. You ain't black if you don't toe the mark and walk the line if you don't think like we tell you to. So during the presidential campaign, remember Mr. Biden? Telling this black man this. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump and you ain't black. Why would he even risk saying such a thing? Because he knew it would be accepted. He's only echoing what the black leadership of the Democratic Party has been saying for years. So he knew he was on solid ground. You ain't black if you do not do what we tell you to do. That's been years in the workings. These are evil communications. These are idiots. The question is, is how come we have not been able to see them? Because the eyes are closed. Going back to the view, and I truly do not like using the words stupid and idiot. I got a ninth grade education. I ain't the brightest bulb in the room, I promise you. But when something is so far below my intelligence level, it's got to be stupid. 
There ain't nothing else you can call it. Whoopi Goldberg informs us, and you can tell by the micro expressions of her face, she is enlightening the world on something. And it is that the Holocaust, the killing, gassing, butchering, murdering, six million Jews had nothing to do with race and was not racism at all. Even though the man who gassed them and killed them plainly said, this is an inferior race, his name was Adolf Hitler, and they must be exterminated. But Whoopi has found wisdom somewhere. And she tells us it had nothing to do with race. And her explanation for actually what it had something to do with is very interesting. If going to do this, then let's be truthful about it because the Holocaust isn't about race. No. No, it's well, not about maybe race. It's not, but it's about white supremacy. It's well, about but it's not, it's not about and, and, and race. It's it's then, but these are two Romans. white groups of people. Well, how do we have to black they people see them as white people? And they, but you're missing the point. You're yeah. missing the point. Yeah. The minute you turn it into race, it goes down this alley. Let's talk about it for what it is. It's how people treat each other. Watch this facial expression a couple more times as she obviously believes she is revealing a knowledge that has come from on high somewhere. The Holocaust, well, it's not about race. Watch your face. The Holocaust isn't about race. No. No, the Holocaust isn't about race. No. No, the Holocaust isn't about race. No. No. It was about how people treated people. She went on to say the inhumanity toward humans. Well, then, Whoopi, how come we can't say the same thing about what you call racism here in the United States? I mean, can we now, by your definition, eliminate all racism as just how people treat other people? Well, I mean, that would involve racism because they're treating them the way they're treating them because they're racist. Now, she has been suspended from the view for two weeks for her profound wisdom that she shared with the world. Of course, if it would have been a conservative that said it, he'd be gone forever, wouldn't he? The idea that the killing and gassing and murdering of six million Jews and the man who done it said it was to exterminate and eliminate an inferior race. This woman is stupider. There you go. More stupid than a sprayed roach without question. And then finally, I close out tonight with something worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. The filthy communication that you hear in its like kind from these mouths is what's destroying the country. But now we're in a transgender world, something that Sodom and Gomorrah never found, never had the technology to create, you know, a man becoming a woman and a woman becoming a man. And of course, this Democratic Party who has locked us down, closed us down, shut us down, destroyed our businesses with lies on top of lies are the ones following science. But somehow or another, a man is now a woman and a woman is now a man, and they support it, calling him she's and she's him. You remember the swimmer who broke the record by some 38, 40 seconds of the females. Well, come to find out this swimmer, who is now a woman, Laya, Layla, or something, a woman who now has to share the locker room, and if anybody in the locker room, the female locker rooms, is uncomfortable, they will have to leave. But the problem is, as you see, this woman who's racing now with women, hadn't even been through the sex change operation. She still has her equipment. <laughs> or wait a minute. She still has his equipment. You understand what I'm talking about? And the girls has to be in the room with him. And a couple of the girls says, she is still attracted to women and she, he, still has all of his male body parts racing and swimming as a woman 
in the locker room with women, with his male body parts, and he is called a she. This is absurd. It's beyond stupid. It's beyond crazy. It is purely demonic. Another realm. I mean that. It's another realm. It's something Sodom and Gomorrah did not even know existed. And this is the reason why. In the day of judgment, even Sodom will rise up in judgment against you. I'll need him with a smile For he healed my 